Hello everyone. We're just uh, doing some work out of the textbook here and we're focusing on capacity. Um, and what we normally do, like everything, most of our world is measured in uh, litres. This was two litres of orange juice in here. Not anymore because I've, I've finished that off. Um, <coughs> and the other thing I got out of the kitchen was uh, this guy here. So this is a measuring jug and it's a bit complicated because we're in, got measurements here for ounces and cups, but on one side here we've got um, milliliters. Okay, I'm wondering if the camera can see that. So there's our metric measurements there and the graduations there, I guess, we're measuring accurately until to the closest uh, 50 mils on that guy there. So, um, and I had to go and search in the medicine cab cabinet because I wanted something to help us out here um, to understand one of the important conversions that we need to make. And I'm just going to grab a bit of paper here as well, I think, so we can have a look at this. I'm going to hold this up and I'm going to hold this in front of it so the camera will focus in on this. Um, this is a thing I could find to measure to the nearest milliliter. So that's what a mill looks like. It's not much. And one of the important conversions we've got is converting... Um, uh, the units that we've been working in, so um, centimetres, millimetres, uh, metres. Um, the one that I remember is one milliliter, I've got to be really careful here, one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimetre. So that often gives me um, what I need to convert. So now that I know that I'm thinking in terms of being able to convert between um, and measurements that we've been working in, so they might be millimetres, um, centimetres, metres and kilometres, now I've got a, a conversion between um, between those measurements and a uh, liquid, okay? And that's what I always, that's the only thing I ever remember is one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. And like I'll hold it up again, it's not a lot. So that's how I go about converting between these things. So the other thing I've got to say is just be really careful when you're looking at working with capacity and you're working with liquids. Um, I see a lot of mistakes being made because people aren't diligent enough. Uh, they see an M and they get it confused between milliliters. They're not looking to see that it's a capital M. And when you see the capital M, that's megaliters. So. Um, and that's a million liters. Uh, so please do, do not get that confused between megaliters and milliliters. Um, there's plenty of things I can show you on the light board and I'll do that now and help you out with those conversions. I've just written a couple of things on the board. Uh, one of those things is one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. Uh, and a thousand liters equals one meter cubed. And that helps me with my conversions between uh, liquids and and um, my other measurements. So what we need to um, work on now is a couple of things. And one of the first things I write is one litre equals a thousand mils or a thousand millilitres. Um, and so that equals 1,000 cubic centimetres. So 
that's important for some of the conversions that we'll do. And the same thing happens here. There are a few questions with uh, other conversions where we've got kilo, kilo liters, kilo meaning a thousand. Um, I'm just going to write that down here. So one kiloliter is a thousand a thousand liters and that's the same thing again we can convert that back to our other units of measurement here that is going to be one cubic meter and it might be worth just pointing that out here just drawing um, coming back to volume and and if that's one meter by one meter by one meter um, that's roughly what it looks like. And out in industry, you have uh, these big containers that they lift with forklifts. They're called cubes because they hold a thousand liters or one cubic meter. Okay. So um, there's one more thing that we really need to be careful about while we're talking about units is that we don't want to get messed, uh, confused with one milliliter and at the other end of the spectrum we've got one megaliter okay one is a lowercase m and the other one is a capital m and what we're talking about there why we don't want to get confused is we've got one one thousandth of a liter and here we've got a uh, mega meaning times one million and um we just got to be really careful, I guess, about that thing. So, what do I see there? I see a game of zeros. And let's play that game for a moment. And I'm just going to call it the game of zeros. And often, um, what, you, what I want you to uh, be good at here is uh, mastering these conversions. And... Because we're in a base 10 system, we can think about uh, what's happening with the zero. So let's, let's do this. We've got one megaliter, and that is equal to 1,000 kiloliters, which is equal to uh, 1,000 Well, sorry, one million liters. My apologies. I hope that's still on the board. So, what are we doing in our game of zeros here? We're timesing by a thousand. And that's essentially just putting three zeros on the end of our answer. And again, when we're converting here, we've got another, we're multiplying by another thousand. And that's essentially just putting three more zeros on our answer up there. Um, that's all we're doing. And when we go back the other way, uh, I often say, uh, let's just knock off three zeros. So going back the other way, uh, we're dividing by a thousand. And here we're dividing by a thousand again. And I'm not a big fan of these styles of diagrams, but they're out there and they exist. But at the moment, what it gives us a, I think what, what it gives us a sense of, we've got a drawing back here about what is a cubic meter. And so I'm thinking about uh, right here, uh, I'm thinking about um, a megaliter here being 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters of water. Okay, for example, water. Um, that's what that's what I'm thinking about here. And I'm not not like I don't draw these usually. I just leave it like I did. But that's the kind of scale that we're working on when we're talking about megaliters. Just imagine a ten meter by ten meter by ten meter cube, and that's that's uh, that gives you the sort of reference point that you need. Now there's a few questions out of the textbook asking you to convert those units. Um, I like playing the game of zeros. I'm going to write that down. Game 
of zeros. Um, and how does this work? So let's have a look. We've got, for example, something in milliliters and we're asked to, in brackets, uh, the questions will often be set up this way, we're asked to convert to liters. Now, I look at this straight away and I say something to myself like, there are um, a thousand mils in every liter. So one way of doing it is setting it up like this and dividing by a thousand and um, you could do that on the calculator if you wanted to and you'd end up with 9.320 liters. What I'm going to suggest to you because you're in the game of zeros, um, there's two ways to think about this. So let's rewrite out the original question and I'm going to change the color of my pen. One way is to think about, well, the decimal points here and my game of zeros allows me to make um, this, because we're dividing by a thousand, make this uh, a thousand times smaller. Okay. Um, and those three zeros give me license to make three hops in here. And imagine moving the decimal place across to here and then writing my answer out here is 9.320 liters. Um, what I would also say is that some people like to leave the decimal place in a fixed position and then think about moving um, the numbers. So we would play, maybe we'd start off uh, like this and then in the next move we would be like this and that, so we're making um, three moves here and then we would end up like where the, the decimal place has stayed in the same position and we've just made the numbers uh, 10 times smaller then we've made it 10 times smaller and then 10 times smaller again and the net effect of that is dividing by 1000 so I was taught to treat the decimal place like a kangaroo and hop it into the position but I understand that there's a different way to see things and 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 you might be taught a different way as well but certainly what we want to get you into the game of is um, understanding these conversions and if we're dividing by a thousand we need to make the number that we're looking at a thousand times smaller or if we're multiplying by a thousand it's often a case of just what I say is just uh, uh, slapping zeros on the end of your number so really quickly uh, I'll do another example in this game of zeros and let's go the other way let's make uh, a conversion um, where we, we really do play around with a whole bunch of zeros so why don't we have six megaliters and we want to turn that into liters and the one thing that we understand here is that this is millions of liters and the game of zeros is we're at six as a whole number six megaliters and so that's going to look like six million liters because there's six zeros there put the units on the end and and that's the kind of thing that we do so i just want to spend a moment and look at some sort of tap questions i call them tap questions because um, they usually involve a dripping tap of some sort and where it's dripping at a certain maybe two mils per second okay um, there's one thing that we don't deal with in this unit uh, here is uh, time and you'll need to convert between um, you know minutes hours days and all that kind of stuff so it might be worth stopping and, and talking here this 60 seconds in one minute and there's 60 minutes in one hour so 
If you're doing calculations from uh, seconds to hours, a little shortcut here is, you know you're going to times it by 60 and then times it by 60 again. And it may, may be, if you just pick up on this tip, you can, you can uh, multiply it by 3,600. Okay? And of course you can do the reverse. You can go from hours to seconds. Um, by doing the reverse. So um, dividing by 3,600, which is, which are, they're equal and opposite operations depending on which way you're going. Um, and the other thing to remember here is what we need to also, just because it's time, there's 24 hours in a day And the other thing to remember here is we have 365.25 days in the year. So your dripping tap question actually steps you through this um, where you need to uh, convert from seconds to minutes to hours. And I don't think you'll need this one. Uh, but then there'll be a part of the question that asks you how, how much water have you lost out of the tap in one day? And then they ask you to work out how many uh, litres or something um, for the year. So they're the types of questions that you need to be careful with. All right. Now we went from the tap question to, oh, I don't know, let's call them the dam questions. Okay. Uh, because... We've got a city here and somewhere up in the hills we've got a lake that feeds um, the city with its water. And so the numbers are going to be big. So I've chosen this question because, you know, you might want to reach for the calculator to do this. You're welcome to. Or you can just play the game of zeros. And this is a perfect question for playing the game of zero. So something like you've got two million litres of megalitres of water. Okay, just keep an eye on that. That's a capital M for megalitres. And we've got the people in the city are using, on average, they're using 400 litres per day. Okay, and we're given one more piece of information, um, something we need to know. We need to know the population. And in this city, we've got 5 million people. So um, the numbers are going to be big. And let's play that game of zeros. Um, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to... There's 2 million megalitres. And I'm going to convert that to uh, litres. Lucky I've got a big board here. And... Um, We've got 400 litres per person times the 5 million people in the city. So right now, I'm going to play the game of zeros. And I've set it up this way just to demonstrate something to you that don't be scared of big numbers because I'm crossing out uh, a whole bunch of zeros here. And... Just be careful, I've got a 4 times 5 there, and that's handy because what have I got? I've got 20,000. Yep, I still got these zeros in here. Count them up 1, 2, 3, 4. My answer has four zeros 1, 2, 3, 4. And I've got 4 times 5 here. Now, I'm going to turn, I could leave it as 4 times 5, why not? Let's do this. But we all know that 4 times 5 is equal to 20. So um, I could leave it like that or maybe you, you're more comfortable when you see when we crunch the numbers. So let's just put 20 there. Now I can cancel that 20 with a 20 there. So in effect we've got a thousand days 
of water for this city if it doesn't rain again um, for how long so um, a thousand days what's that equal to um, and we know there's 365.225 days in the 65 point two five days in the year so um, I'm saying it's going to be less than three years and it turns out to be and this is a step I won't lie to you I did use a calculator for this bit and that's roughly uh, 2.74 I'm going to round it to 2.75 because that's the same as two years and nine months before this city runs out of water and um, that's how I answered this question and I really wanted to demonstrate that to you not to be um, scared of the bigger numbers and get into this game of cancelling zeros you can see how I've set it up and you can see how um, easy the question become this last little bit is just me trying to figure out and and trying to understand what a thousand days is but I think in the textbook they're just asking for a thousand days um, so there we go thank you